Hi, I'm Peter Charles of Hooked for Life Fly Fishing and welcome to my video series for beginner fly tires. Today we're going to look at the Partridge and Orange which is a Yorkshire wet, a wet fly that's very very easy to tie. It's a very popular fly, it catches lots of fish. It was uh, popularized in England in, in the Yorkshire area uh, for trout fishing. It imitates the caddis pupa and it's very very good uh, to use when uh, caddis are emerging. Um, we can tie it in a variety of colors. You can have a partridge in orange, a partridge in green, a partridge in yellow. Uh, today we're going to do the partridge in orange. So let's get started. Let's examine a partridge in orange and see how it's put together. First off we have this partridge hackle. It's a very soft barb and it flows very well in slight currents and it makes a fly look alive. Then we have the orange floss body and uh, that's typical of the color of a lot of caddis pupa. They tend to be so this golden orange color. And finally we have this heavy gauge wet fly hook and the purpose of that heavy gauge hook is to get the fly to sink. Okay, let's get started. Okay, let's look at the materials we're going to use. First our thread. It's uni thread in orange in a 6 aught. We have uni floss in orange for our body. And of course we're going to have our partridge feather. Now let's look at the size of the partridge feather. You notice it's roughly twice the width of the gape of the hook and that's how we're going to size it today. We want one that's roughly twice the length. If it's a little bit more, a little bit less, it doesn't matter, but we want it roughly twice the width of the gape of the hook. So let's start by tying on our thread. We start just behind the eye, leaving ourselves a little bit of room. Trap our thread and then we trim off our tag. Now we're going to get our floss and we'll just bring it up behind and trap it in this fashion. And then we're going to make nice closely spaced winds. And you notice how I'm holding the floss up at an angle. The purpose for this is to have the thread lay down close to each other by use, holding that floss up at an angle. I'm causing the uh, thread to sort of skid down and so the wraps are relatively close together. Now I'm going to wind back carefully. And the reason why I'm being careful with this and keeping the thread wraps close together is I want a nice smooth floss body. If I was to sort of just be in a hurry and whip it back any old fashion then I'd end up with some nasty looking gaps which would show up when I wind up my floss, my floss body. Now, you know, for some of us we're not too fussy. If we're in a hurry we can do this very quickly and, you know, it won't look that neat but it will still catch fish. And I'll trim off that tag. Find that over. Now I'm going to take my half hitch tool and you'll notice how I wind the thread around. I'll put a couple of half hitches in there. Now the reason why is I'm using a rotary vise. So I have a little holder that holds my bobbin out of the way. And now I'm going to get ready to wind my floss on. I prefer to use the hackle pliers when I do this. So you can see I've used my hackle pliers to grip the end of the floss. And I'll smooth that floss down with my fingers. So I want it to lay flat. You have to be careful not to nick the floss with the point of the hook. So you'll notice I'm moving the floss out of the way. And if I see any winds in there I'll try and take them out. Because I want this to lay nice and evenly. And I'm winding my floss in touching turns. And what that means is each la layer of floss I put down touches the edge of the one previous. And if you make a mistake and things get a little sloppy, just back up. It's not a problem. You can undo this, start all over. Now I will come in with my thread and I will lock this in place. Put a couple of turns in and then I'm going to turn this up in this fashion 
and lock. Now this helps to make the fly more durable. It does create a bit of bulk and it makes a little bit of a bump there, but it helps to keep my uh, floss from coming undone when we catch a fish. So let's review for a second what we've done here. We've tied on our thread, and tied on our floss and laid down a base of thread over it. Then we've wound our floss body back and then we've tied it off and we folded it over. Now it's time to tie in our partridge feather. Now I start with the feather in this fashion of course, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the tip and I'm going to stroke back some of the barbs. So it looks like this. And then I'm going to take my scissors. I'm basically going to cut off and leave a little triangle like that. You see that little triangle there? And what I'm going to do with that little triangle is I'm going to use that to tie in my feather. It acts as a little grip. I'm going to wind over and lock that in place. Make sure it's thoroughly locked in. And then I'm going to take my half hitch tool. You notice how I wind it around. And I'm just going to hang it on my keeper there. Now I'm going to take my hackle pliers and start winding this partridge feather on. Now you notice I'm turning the, the hook away from me and there's a reason for that. I want to fold these barbs over and I don't want to jab my fingers into the hook point. So by turning the hook point away from me, I prevent that. Now be very careful when you're doing this. The stem is very easily broken. Now we start winding forward, nice and slowly. You want your barbs to fold backwards. And you make sure that each turn of the feather winds the quill in front of the previous turn. And if you don't like the look of what you've just done, don't be afraid to back up. Now I've just wound on all of it right there. Now we'll lock that in place. Now sometimes you get lucky, we'll be able to pop this off if we're lucky. There we go. It's better to pop it off than to cut it with scissors because cutting with scissors usually leaves a little end. Now one of the things I like to do is if I've got a little few barbs sticking up there and sticking forward, I will just wrap over them, hold it back. And now we're ready to do our whip finish. Now if you've not used a whip finish tool before, they look a little bit intimidating. But what we do is we hook our tool in this fashion so it looks and looks like this. And then we just wind over three times is usually enough. And then we just slip it out and pull the hook out. Now what we've done there is you created basically a series of half hitches and that locks our thread in place. We can we can choose to um, use a half hitch tool and do the same thing. That works fine. Uh, but it's, get, it's good to learn how to use a whip finish tool. It does make the job neater and quicker. Now our last step is to use our bodkin to apply a little bit of head cement on this. And there we go. The partridge in orange all ready to go fishing. So there you have the partridge and orange. It's a very easy uh, fly to tie as you can see, very quick. You can knock them off quite quickly and uh, fill your fly box uh, in short order. They are very, very effective fly. I've caught lots of fish on these and uh, they usually imitate emerging caddis. So get to know the caddis in your area for the right color because you can do this in orange, you can do it in yellow, you can do it in green, all of them are effective. So remember that the partridge in orange is a caddis emerger pattern and you fish it on the swing or dead drifted and uh, get out there with them and catch some fish. Enjoy.